Welcome to Half the Battle. Well, it's cartoon time again. Today, we're taking a look at Operation Mind Menace. And straight off, I gotta tell ya, this is the worst looking cartoon they have ever produced. It's like the entire quality assurance department at Sunbow was taking a collective nap on this one. So strap in folks, it's gonna hurt. The episode starts off with Flash and Airborne in pursuit of a Cobra fancopter, which has a girl prisoner tied to their landing struts. And hey, you almost never saw these two characters in the cartoon, so it's great they get to be main characters in this story. Yeah, never let it be said I don't praise the cartoon on occasion. The praise stops right here though. Another fancopter shows up to help out his buddy. I guess that's why they've been trying to shake us ever since we got on their tails in Honolulu. Really? They flew there from Honolulu, did they? I have notes! The distance between Hawaii and Easter Island, where they are now, is about 4,500 miles. The range of the Dragonfly, whose design is based on the real-life AH-1T Super Cobra helicopter, is 365 miles. Even counting special modifications, there's no way they could fly 13 times that far. To say nothing of the goddamn Fang helicopter, which is the size of a Volkswagen. This cartoon fails at either geometry or military hardware. Actually, probably both. Meanwhile, at G.I. Joe headquarters, they are testing Airborne Skid Brother to see if he has psychic powers. Oh, it, um, it's gonna be one of those episodes, is it? Now I feel silly over complaining about that helicopter range thing. So yeah, psychic powers. Not psychic, psionic. Oh, well, pardon the hell out of me. Also, I have notes. In science? Well, pseudoscience bullcrap anyway. Psionic powers refer to the ability of mentally influencing electricity or electric devices. In fiction, the term is pretty much interchangeable with psychic powers. Either way, this guy is talking out of his ass. So they're doing this card experiment, but let's face it, it just doesn't work without the electrical shocks. Good guess, but wrong. <laughs> Well, I don't care if Cobra is trying to use psi powers as weapons, Duke. I still don't like the idea of recruiting civilians. Civilians like Quick Kick, Shipwreck, or Scoop, who in the cartoon were all recruited on the spot, you mean? The kid is bummed because he can't... Okay, what, what the hell is up with his eyes? Yeah, this is a major problem with the episode. They can't seem to animate the eyes properly. I could point out every instance of this as it happens, but then I'd be grinding the review to a halt every 30 seconds. So here's all of them in one giant ball of stupid. And none of those required me to go through the episode frame by frame. No, they were all glaringly obvious mistakes. Speaking of which, let's get back to the plot. Turns out, the kid is telekinetic, and he has a telepathic link to Airborne, since he goes haywire when the dragonfly gets ambushed and crashes into the water. They get interrupted as the door burns down, revealing Storm Shadow, two cobras, and, um, a homeless guy, I guess. There he is! The kid! He's the last one on the list! And there's that fine quality control again. Why is the trooper speaking when Storm Shadow's body language indicates it should be his line? They are there to kidnap the kid for his powers. What do you think you're doing? And he started mumbling his words before he even got gagged. Nice sound editing there. What do you think you're doing? We're like four minutes in, people. I, I hope you packed a lunch for this one. The homeless guy is actually pyrokinetic, able to make fire with his mind. I don't really see the use for Cobra here, 
as a guy with a flamethrower could accomplish the same thing, really. Still, it does the job of allowing the bad guys to get away. Meanwhile, a Flash and Airborne have washed up on shore and get captured immediately. Yeah, then let's try 20 questions. The girl you kidnapped, who is she? What do you want with her? Why are you- Quiet! If you flyboys are so bright, you can figure it out for yourselves. Wait a minute. A bad guy who doesn't explain the evil plan? Did, did I jump into Bizarro World or something? Anyway, during the bad guy's escape, we get a short info dump. The cobra crown thing they wear amplifies their psychic powers, and the thing on their chests, well... The Neuro Disruptor will prevent that, as it has with all the others. Yeah, it's a mind control device. Okay, but why the hell would a Neural Disruptor be on their chests instead of, and follow me here, their freaking heads? You know, where the brain lives? They could have just switched the use of these two devices around and it would have made more sense, but nope. Brain control thing on the chest. That, that's like putting a condom on your big toe. As they are being followed by the Joes, Cobra Commander orders their Easter Island base destroyed. I guess he got tired of having the Joes do all the blowing up of his stuff for him. And Destro will demonstrate the power of this fully armed and operational... Teen Kid with Telekinesis. What the devil was that? Not really seeing anything a regular guy with a laser gun couldn't accomplish here. Back on Easter Island, the captured Joes are confronted by Cobra Commander. What are you gonna do with my brother? Uh, yeah, that's airborne being colored as Flash. I mean, come on, did this episode even have an editor? Also... You deny a dying man his last request? A point well taken. This is one of our several top secret training camps for psionically gifted individuals. Well, of course, Cobra Commander is gonna explain the whole plan to his captives, including the location of their secret base atop Mountain K-12. Also, also... Cobra has apparently retrofitted two his tanks for the sole purpose of transporting two small cages. That... that must have cost a bundle. Who the hell is in charge of their accounting anyway? Oh, right. That explains it. Now, the commander has to get rid of his prisoners. Does he A. Shoot them? B. Shoot them repeatedly? Or C. Really, for God's sake, just shoot them! Ha! Trick question! The secret answer is D. Have Tommy bring those giant heads to life and give them a stone body to attack the Joes. Because if you're gonna execute somebody, try to find a way that makes even Bond villains look sane and reserved. So, the two are being chased by giant Easter Island heads that have come to life. And... Remember my last cartoon review, where I bitched about Cobra using bombs to set off earthquakes, and how unrealistic that was? Yeah, puts that whole thing in perspective, doesn't it? Anyway, they get to the edge of a cliff and are about to fall to their deaths, when the others arrive and save them at the last second. Because of course they do. At Cobra's hidden mountain base, Destro is worried that the Joes might come a-knocking if, by some miracle, Flash and Airborne survived. Yeah, I feel that at this point, Destro has gone through this crap enough to notice some kind of pattern here, and he knows what's coming next, so he orders the captives to act as guards. Sure enough, the Joes show up, and their first obstacle is the girl that was kidnapped in the beginning of the episode. She can astrally project. What was that? What? You didn't feel it? Something weird inside you for a mo system malfunction. The laser cannon's on overload. Overloading an energy weapon. Huh, I guess this is Star Trek all of a sudden. They beat her by um going near her. Cuz if we move her, she might never find her way back inside her body, right? 
Whatever you say, pal. Cobra's new ultimate weapon, everybody. Let let's just see how the rest of Cobra's X-Men are doing. A flamethrower guy goes up against um Blowtorch, the G.I. Joe flamethrower guy. Nice symmetry there. Though for the animation of him jumping off his vehicle, he's colored in like Ace, the pilot for some reason. There's that quality control they're so proud of again. Also, a flamethrower guy is defeated by himself as he forgot that fire melts ice and he gets trapped beneath the stuff. A blowtorch is nice enough to free him, so all is well I suppose. Up next are two guards on top of the dome. That change into two completely different characters in the next shot, who also happen to be twins. Yeah, they not only screwed up the character models, but reused the same one twice. Look, there's continuity screw-ups, like say the Enterprise firing its phaser out of a torpedo tube for example, and then there's this fluster cuck. The editor for this episode was either drunk or high. Probably both. Oh, and we don't find out what psychic powers the Wonder Twins here have, because they're taken out before they can do anything. They could probably only bend spoons or something. So, with all of Cobra's other undefeatable and fierce psychic guards taken out, they now have to rely on Tommy. This should end well. He turns a tree into a Japanese porn and the floor into a mouth. Now sure, that's impressive, I guess, but is it really better than men with guns? Airborne finds his brother and tries to talk him out of the mind control. He finally succeeds by showing him... a G.I. Joe toy. So okay, he says it's a model Tommy made for him, but the imagery is about as subtle as a pack of charging elephants. And so the day is saved. Cobra Commander escapes because it's a day that ends in a Y, and we're through with this crap. So, that was Operation Mind Menace. You wanna know my thoughts? Well, let me put it this way. Years and years ago, I'm talking when I was in my late teens, I was at this party in one of my friend's yards. There was much alcohol involved, and one of the guests threw up. The guy's family dog then came running up to lick it. It's... it's the grossest thing I've personally seen. I would rather play that scene inside my head over and over again, instead of having to watch that freaking episode one more time! Look, the story itself is fine. Psychic powers, sure, it's silly, but it's the G.I. Joe cartoon, I'm used to that by now. But the animation errors, the shoddy voice editing, the characters being off-model... I mean, look how fat Cobra Commander looks here. It, it's just too much. From the animators, to the editors, to the director, it was clear that nobody really gave a crap when it came to this episode, so why the hell should I? Ugh. I, uh, I think I'm gonna need something more positive next time, just to wash this turd out of my brain. Well, see you next time, everybody!